Okay, welcome to the guitar show. We're going to be talking about um, slide guitar, um, all facets of it, and also um, you know some cool slide guitar players that are on the scene now, and some that have passed, some of the greats as well. So um, let's um, let's play a bit of slide guitar first. This is actually this guitar here. Um, it's been in progress for the last 15 years since I first got um, the body. Um, it's had about seven necks, I kid you not. Um, and uh, this one at the moment is the one that's really kind of working. Um, and it's been in lots of different tunings, now it's in C sharp. So that's a C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F, G sharp, C sharp. And uh, what it's really good for is just for sort of um, kind of grooving. So I'll give you an example of that. So it's really nice for that kind of thing. Just bigger strings, um, higher action, and it's kind of come to life. Um, when I had um, it, a set of twelves on this, um, it didn't really get the pickup sort of working. And these are actually original 1950s. This is a 1950s pickup, which is a bit of a nightmare. Um, this pickup here is a real nightmare to set up because when you pluck the E string down, oh, it's a C sharp string, sorry. It's okay, but when you pick it up, there's no volume. So, just depending on the way that the string vibrates, vibrates, um, you'll get noise, less volume or more volume. And um, so, and you're always having to twig these little screws because they either rattle and the vibrations make them lower or go higher, um, normally lower. So you're always constantly adjusting that. And um, and also this is an original 60s Tisco pickup, and um, this thing as well. It just needs more string, thicker string, and then it starts to sound really cool. So I'll just show you. This is just the neck. So you know, it just kind of wakes up more when you've got um, slightly fatter strings on it. So all in all, this is like my favourite slide guitar. It's taken a long time to get to where it's at. Um, and yeah, so these are the original thing, and this is the original plate, which uh, you don't actually need, it just makes the guitar heavier. And the only reason I have this plate is to copy Rikuda. Because Rikuda have kind of came up with this old design and we did a leopard skin um, scratch plate. I didn't actually, I wasn't too bothered about having this scratch plate, but the guy who, um, Peter um, Corp, who kind of put this guitar together for me, he kind of put this on as a surprise. So that was kind of nice of him. Thanks, Peter. Um, but yeah, this sounds really cool. Like I said, for that, that real sort of chunky Rikuda style rhythm. So it's just got that real biting sound. Let's compare that. Whoop. Let's compare that to this has kind of been my professional sort of gigging guitar for the last um, for the last uh, year. I've sort of done pretty much all the gigs on this guitar, and this has got a new. Mojo pickups. Uh, I think Lola do it as well. Uh, a repro of these, um, but here in England, um, Mojo makes them. So, you know, um, I've got one of his, which is really fantastic. Mm. I actually attempted for the first time ever to age this, and I've really messed it up. So don't try and age your things. Um, 
And anyway, this, let me just play you this. This is actually out of phase. Yeah, that, the other guitar was in phase. This is actually out of phase. So these are just both the pickups on together. kind of see that this one here is more kind of that out of phase sort of tone but it uh, works really well um, as a lead tone and as a kind of quite a percussive sound. Another thing that's great, you can kind of tap these things um, and you can kind of incorporate that into your style which I'm trying to do at the moment. You know that kind of vibe you know but um, I'll let you know when I've mastered it. Um, so yeah, that's really where we're at. Another thing I'm using, the big secret here, is I'm using flat wound strings. Um, I don't use round wounds anymore for playing slide guitar. So that's my big secret to you. Um, I thought about keeping that secret, but I thought, nah, how can I do that, you know? Um, so I've got to share, share the knowledge. Um, so flat wound strings, slightly more expensive, but um, you know, they just ring out. Just go heavy, if you can play 13s, I, I, I would suggest playing 13s if you can. If you can't, okay, 12s are fine. But I'm just finding that these kind of pickups um, really work well with the, the bigger wire. Another thing, this here is, I'm gonna talk about Blake Mills in a minute, um, but this here is a Blake Mills idea. Uh, he first started using these and we all copied. Um, he is a um, great slide guitar player and he, He's using this. this was actually my favourite neck pickup uh, for a while. For the last year I was thinking, this is just the best, you know. But actually now, I've actually realised that Raikuda was right all along with his Tisco. And I think the Tisco is actually a better sound than this one. These are both vintage, these two. Um, they're very kind of similar. I don't know how I can... They've both got this kind of hollow sound to them. But I'm guessing this one here is slightly... How can I say, slightly hollower and slightly, it just kind of evokes that kind of old 50s blue sound for me in a better way, you know. Um, this is kind of more fuller, richer. So if you want to play jazz on a golf full, this is probably the one you want to have, you know. But they're both, you know, either are good, but I just prefer the kind of Raikuda one. So let's talk about some slide guitar players. Um, now, when I was first getting into slide guitar, funnily enough, the first guitar, slide guitar player that I kind of knew as a kid, before I even touched the guitar, was Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones. Um, I mean, he played surprisingly well, considering, you know, he was um, growing up in the early 60s and had minimal, um, you know, apart from listening to records of blues guys, you know, there was no YouTube back in the 60s, there's no videos, books, or anything about slide guitar. So, you know, he, he, he really sort of, you know, brought slide guitar to the fray, you know, with his playing. Um, so check out um, Brian Jones and all the early Rolling Stones um, songs. Um, you can probably suggest some great Brian Jones songs, actually, in the comments, if you could, that'd be great. Um, so that, I, he was kind of like the first guy I heard slide, and then my mum, was a massive, and I mean massive, it was quite strange really, but she was actually, well it wasn't strange, she was a big um, Johnny Winter fan. So, um, yeah, Johnny Winter was kind of like the first proper slide guitar player where I thought, whoa, that's like, that's amazing, you know. And this is when I was, you know, a young teenager, you know, before I knew anything, before I even played guitar, I was listening to Johnny Winter, you know, um, let's have some more coffee. Ah, that's mighty fun. So, um, how does Johnny Winter play? Well, as far as I know, I, um, without doing some research, and it would be good to research these guys and, and maybe do a lesson in the future on each of these these um, people I'm going to mention today. 
But Johnny Winter had, he used a thumb pick. Okay, so if you want to play Johnny Winter, he used a thumb pick and then he tuned the guitar to D, open D as far as I'm aware. After going, like I said, I have to do some research on this. Hope I'm right. Um, and he played a thumb pick and he also used one of his fingers and I'm guessing it was this, the, the middle finger, yeah? So he would kind of get this. <laughs> just those two fingers, which is a really cool sort of style because you, um, you kind of get the whole um, nice synth sort of thing. So uh, yeah, I, you know, and obviously the same, you know, the classic sort of Elmore James, um, who I'm going to come to next. But yeah, Johnny Winter was, you know, playing that Firebird in, in D tuning and using the thumb pick and just lightning cool licks you know really really good then after that I, I heard I, I became aware of Raikuda and I think the first there was two two different um, things that I, I got into Raikuda which was the first one because this is before this is pre Buena Vista Social Club when everybody found out about him um, but you know before then um, there were two ways one was um, the performance was a film um, by um, Mick Jagger was starring in this film called performance and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Raikuda did the soundtrack and that was like when I was growing up when I was like 15, 16 that was kind of a cult film we all watched it you know and all my friends and you know that was like really we were really into psychedelic music and that, that was kind of like the cult psychedelic film of the time I think it had Edward Fox and they were all high on mushrooms or something in the film but anyway um yeah, Raikuda, I'm pretty sure Raikuda was involved in the soundtrack and he was, you know, that's where he taught Keith, Keith, because Keith Richards was kind of hanging around the studio um, apparently around that time and that's where Raikuda taught um, Keith Richards those open tunings. And the second way I heard about um, Raikuda was on Maria Maldor's album, um, which uh, was Midnight at the Oasis. And he, she had a whole load of players on that album. Um, and um, there was a great, like one of the best solos ever played, ever, in the history of guitar, was Amos Garrett. Um, so uh, check, check that album out. Um, Amos Garrett actually plays on the song um, Midnight at the Oasis, and uh, I've never analysed that solo, but I'm sure you can find a lesson on YouTube, but that's an incredible solo. Uh, maybe he, did he, I don't know if he played slide on that or not, but, you know. But also... Raikuda was actually a session musician on that album, so um, um, he, well, he had his photo and an acoustic guitar. So I kind of, you know, hearing these two things about him, I start, started checking him out. So Raikuda was a very early influence. And obviously, with the Raikuda thing, let's go back to the Raikuda guitar. The Raikuda guitar, tuning to D, but sometimes in G as well. And he used the slide on his fourth finger, which gave him access to the other three fingers to use, you know. So, so that's a kind of the whole style, you know, and, you know, he's playing with his fingers, no plectrum. So that, that kind of groove I was playing earlier. You, know, you can do that with your fingers, and you can. You got the. You know, you can bring all your chicken picking. You know, listen to Jerry Donahue if you want to know what chicken picking is. You know, it's that kind of. It's got a bit of that. It's got a blue, bit of blues. It's it's kind of if you want to do that style, I think you need to you need to go back and and learn finger style, blues finger style guitar playing, and then you can bring it back into your slide playing. So listen, to, like learn a song like. Um, Which Raikuda actually put on his first album, but that that particular song, you know, uses a lot of different sort of techniques, and and I guess with Raikuda, it just felt natural to have, you know, his fingers to play that. You know, 
then you can play a bit of blues and slide on it. And you know, that's that's really where my whole slide technique comes from, my, my personal slide technique. It's really listening to Rakuda. And then going back to these early players, like I started getting into L Hooker. Now L Hooker is a really interesting guy because he, uh, apart from being um, let's play this one. We got a few guitars out on the sofa today. So L Hooker was really cool because he was um, he was he, he played slide in standard tuning, you know. So we're talking. slide so you can you can then play normal guitar and then you can bring this actually he played with a plectrum you know L Hooker's was a great um, plectrum player so for that sort of style I guess sit your guitar up for um, your normal maybe use 11s like this slightly higher action not that high I don't have it that high but just the, the tension of an 11 gauge um, string gauge will tighten the strings anyway <laughs> Still do your bending. And then you can bring in the, the slide. So if you're playing with the plectrum. You love to do the flat seven. So that's the kind of a hooker and um I guess a guitar player that was quite similar to that was um, Mick Taylor, who I also got into because uh, when I first, when I was like, um, I think 17, when I first started, I started playing guitar at 17 basically, and it was just kind of like vroom, all these sort of um, albums that I was listening to, you know, um, uh, John Mayles Blues Breakers, the Beano album, the one with Eric Clapton, and then The Hard Road with Peter Green, and then, I um, can't remember the other one, uh, but anyway, there was one with Peter Green, and the next one was Mick Taylor, and um, just fantastic playing. And I'm pretty sure that Mick Taylor was playing slide then, and, and his technique, because I actually saw him live, I went to a concert of his many years ago. And the way he, the way he plays is kind of like... So it's ingenious, really, because... He doesn't change his technique at all. He's just playing with the plectrum and then just brings the slide in to finish, to finish a line, you know. And it's um, sort of. You know, which is a really cool idea, you know. So, um, yeah, check, check out Mick Taylor because he's a great player. Okay, where are we at? We're, let's, let's, go, let's go back to this guitar. And then. Um, I start getting into around that time as we as we all do when we're playing guitar we hear about the Allman brothers and of course Dwayne Allman um, and so uh, I got into I thought I better check his technique out because you know he was he was the famous guy uh, born neck you know and um, obviously played on Layla so I got one of the hold of one of these cordicin bottles or these little pill bottles you know. I start wearing it on my third finger. So I kind of did that for about a year. I think I kind of forgot about the Rikuda technique and just tried to play like Dwayne Norman, you know, so. So a lot of um, Dwayne Norman's technique was just using his fingers and these kind of slides. You know, and really just muting everything, muting everything apart from the you know the strings you're plucking you know so 
So really, that was kind of really how I thought my technique was really listening to Dwayne Orman and, and Ray Kuda, you know. Um, now let's just go back as well and let's check out some other guys um, that, you should, that I think you should be checking out. Um, Elmore James, you know, he is the guy that wrote the book on slide guitar. You know, he, um, he was the one that came up with the famous lick and uh, sort of made it possible for all of us to kind of understand how to play that bottleneck technique, you know. And he was, um, you know, when he played, he was like force of nature. It was like full on, you know. He just literally, he just come, play, slide, sing. You know, it was all like a machine, you know. It was um, very strong, strong performer. Um, so just check out, you know, Elmore James, you know. It's, you know, he just really knew what he was doing. I um, don't know if that's saying anything. There's not, there's not really more I can say about him. It's just listen to the music, really, you know. Um, let's have a look. So you've got um, Sunhouse. And book a white. We're going to go into acoustic now. I don't actually play acoustic slide guitar anymore. There's a few reasons for that. Uh, I'm just sort of focusing on electric slide guitar. Um, I play acoustic fingerstyle blues, but I don't slide on a national national anymore. And there's a few reasons for that. It's the kind of style of music I'm doing really. But um, I will go back to it at one point. But two guys you want to check out: Sunhouse, who's got kind of a strange slapping technique. And also Booker White, um, and he's got this really kind of funky kind of <coughs> groove he does with these kind of again a kind of a slapping thing. Um, a really good player is Tampa Red, if you're into um, acoustic slide guitar. But what, what I'll do another video on I think where we we'll just focus on sort of um, acoustic slide guitar, and we'll probably keep this video just at the electric guys. Um, so you, you got you got L Hooker is somebody you want to check out. Because he was, um, like I said, Johnny Hooker's cousin, great player, um, and really good slide technique, really precise, you know, good intonation. And he got his slide technique from, I think it was Robert Nighthawk. So maybe you want to go back, if you want to go back further, maybe check him out. So that's that's kind of a, a playing in standard tuning, which is, um, you know, might be the way you want to go. Maybe you don't want to go be a full on, you know, have a guitar dedicated to slide guitar. Maybe that's, you just want to just play it a little bit. And I think um, if you listen to El Hooker, um, maybe we can do a lesson on him. But his his lines are, are not hard. The whole his whole approach is that really that flat and seven. Nice, easy style to pick up. So, if you're, especially if you're learning slide guitar, that might be the way to go. You know, check out some L Hooker lines, um, and then maybe have a little listen to Mick Taylor. You know. Okay, let's talk about another great slide um, player, and Lowell George from the band Little Feet. Real sort of um, Neil Lindsay sort of groove um, gospel um, influence player, and he um, I don't have it, but he played a ratchet, some kind of a ratchet on his little finger. Um, but I'm playing just a, a bottom. Let's let's play this because I guess it was quite heavy. And he played, um, I think it was a late '60s Stratocaster with the bullet um, maple neck. So you know you can play you can play um, slide guitar on a, on a Les Paul or a, a Strat. Um, I'm going to give you some advice though. Sorry about that. I'm going to give you some advice. Um, I would say stick to one kind. I'd say stick to Les Paul or um, strap because the scale is different, the scale length is different um, and I, I know you can kind of adjust between the two especially when you're starting to learn um, because obviously Italian a strat has got a longer scale length it might just be good to stay on, on one style of guitar you know um, rather than the other it will keep swapping you know and I think that's why um, a lot of times you see you know Dwayne Ullman kind of stay with the Les Paul um, guitars and obviously um, Raikou to stay with the more strats you know so that's you know just a thought, but you know you can you know I change I change between a Les Paul and a Strat often, and uh, it doesn't really create too many problems. But it's just something to be aware of. So back to sort of Lowell George. Um, he had a, just a beautiful sort of lyrical style, and you know with his voice and his playing, it was kind of one thing, you know, and it was just you know really nice. Sort of But that's 
that's from what I what I hear of it. It's just very lyrical and just a nice vibrato. And like I said, he played the slide on his fourth finger, and the guitar was tuned to a G tuning, open G. You know? Okay, let's talk about some modern players. Well, we've talked about some some of the older guys. Um, one one couple of guys I'll mention: um, Jerry Douglas, great slide player, but he plays like this, more of a flat sort of style. Lap steel style, as well as David Lindley, two guys you want to check out, even just you know to hear some of their lines, you know, because um, just beautiful players. Uh, Blind Willie Johnson is an older player who's sort of one of my uh, one of my sort of heroes as well. Um, kind of a rough sort of style, gospel blues style, someone you want to check out. Um, one of the early blues guys. Um, so I guess the new the new guy that kind of was kind of revolutionised. The Eddie Van Halen of slide guitar must be Derek Trucks. And he kind of took Dwayne Norman's, um, what Dwayne Norman did and kind of um, progressed it and sort of bolted on some other kind of ideas. Dwayne Norman was actually really into John Coltrane and, um, and so that was kind of an influence. And I think Derek Trucks, he uh, not only really sort of um, went down that path, but he also got brought in some Indian influences into his slide playing. So he kind of really developed that style. Again, you know, you're playing open E. This is tuned to D, but he was in open E. It's the same tuning, but you're just tuning E, B, E, G sharp, um, B, sorry, yeah, B, E, if that's right. I might have got that wrong, but. Um, and basically, you know, just using the, the same kind of bowls. So using Dwayne Norman as a platform and just really, you know, learning everything Dwayne Norman did and then taking it off into his own direction. And so I guess he's he's a, a player that I would definitely check out. Another great player who's around now to, to check out is Sonny Landruff. And he's just got this great sort of facility where he kind of... sort of incorporates that into a so you're kind of um, bending strings sorry fretting strings behind the, the, the slide again we could do a lesson in that in the future so that's another guy you want to check out Sonny Landruff check out some of his techniques you know he plays open G and open D um, has 13s or crazy you know high action really high action because that's what you need if you want to do that fretting behind the slide you need to have big strings and high action there's, there's no way you, I personally think you can do it well with a set of 12 strings so you need to be 13s I think minimum for that style um, so definitely um, you know some players there you want to check out another two of my favorite guys well um, a lady called Bonnie Raitt um, I just absolutely love her style of playing she plays she plays with a slide on the second finger. It's um, kind of made out of a bottle, a wine, some kind of a wine bottle. And uh, she, she uses um, D and A tuning. And uh, just got a, you know, another sort of similar kind of vein to Lowell George. And also, you know, um, I, I'm a big, she's influenced me a lot actually, uh, her slide playing. It's really um, been a big influence on my playing. And um, I just love her groove, I love, you know, Again, it's based around a vocal style, and then you know I think if if, if you can if you can do that, if you can sing a song and then play slide to accompany the voice, that's the kind of ultimate for me. Rather than just have it as a soloist, you know, like a, a kind of a Joe Santriani thing, which never sort of appealed to me. I think if you if you base it around a song and a lyrical element, then it's that's for me where I like slide guitar to be. You know, so um, yeah, and so she has a you know on the second finger. Um, and she has a glass slide, like I said, and um, she just uses a strat, Stratocaster, and you know, just plays really nice lines. So maybe again, we can check out one of her solos. Um, so that's, I think, what, pretty much everybody except one player, and that's George Harrison. George Harrison for me was really, really uh, amazing, amazing with notes, you know, melody. He wasn't interested in, you know, showboating. He, his whole thing was about creating, you know, like unison lines and, you know, playing the right, you know, the right note at the right time for the for the song, you know, and it kind of brought slide guitar into, um, you know, pop the pop kind of uh, arena, 
And uh, so again, he's a big influence for me, you know, and I, he'd do these beautiful lines. Apparently he used to spend ages and ages in the studio, like just doing hundreds of takes, you know, just takes upon takes, you know, and then he'd know when he, you know, they pieced together the, the, the kind of the harmonies, you know, so it was, it was very much a kind of a studio, you know, musician, because I guess around that time the Beatles weren't playing. Um, live anyway, but um, you know, and he play for me. He play slide on the Telecaster in standard tuning, you know. So uh, it's he kind of had his unique sort of style again with the plectrum, and um, so that's another guy to check out, George Harrison. You know, one of my favourites. Okay, so another player you really want to check out is Blake Mills, and he's around now. He's a young lad, great player, and what he really does, I, what he does really really well is he plays right Cuda, so he's playing like a, a Cuda caster, and he's got all the kind of rhythm chops, you know, all that kind of stuff that we're doing. You know, all that kind of right Cuda vibe. Um, but then he's got the, the sort of Derek Trucks slide technique. So he's kind of fused together right Cuda and Derek Trucks. Oh, all, you know, Raccoon and Dwayne Norman really, he's kind of put those two styles together. Um, and uh, it's got all the kind of dexterity of, of Derek Trucks is playing. Um, you know, a lot of this sort of, um, all that kind of stuff, and sort of playing a, a, a note. Um, Let, letting this, the kind of the string sustain throughout all the embellishments, you know. Um, so that's one of one thing he's done, and really he's a great, great player. Check him out. Um, got a great tone, great sound. So let me know if we've, we've missed anybody out that you like, uh, any players that you think I should have included, and uh, maybe we could do some lessons in the future on really focusing on some of these players. Um, so I hope this has been a good, fun coffee chat for you. And uh, Happy New Year to everyone. Thanks for checking out the channel and speak soon. Take care.